When we talk about the DSN 70 meter antenna and how it rides on a film of oil, it sounds easy. But practically, how is it done? Movement on the 70 meter antenna is broken into two systems. The, the lift is done by the hydrostatic bearing, which will be the focus of this video. The azimuth and elevation movement is the responsibility of the servo hydraulic system. And we'll do that in a later video. So today, the hydrostatic bearing, or how we make 4,000 tons of antenna glide on a film of oil. After a short climb, uh, I'm at the point now where we have the non-movable part of the antenna, the pedestal, and where it interfaces with the movable part, the 4,000 tons. This is the hydrostatic bearing. We have the epoxy resin sitting on the pedestal. On top of that, we have the sole plate. And then we have the bearing, which is encapsulated as well in the, the reservoir here. So inside this, we have an oil reservoir that goes all the way around the antenna. We don't actually see the runner, because as I said, they're sitting in a, a film of oil, or a reservoir of oil. The, the pads themselves, although we're lifting 4,000 tons, that 4,000 tons is only lifted at three points. So we have three pads sitting on the runner. Those pads are only one and a half meters long by a meter wide. They sit within the runner. Oil is pumped through those pads, creating lift. Again, slightly uh, simplified there, uh, but that's that's the basic theory behind it. Oil can't be compressed. It's forced through under high pressure against the, the runner, and that creates lift. Seven thousandths of an inch, 0.15 of a millimeter, uh, around about the thickness of a piece of paper. That's all that's required. Now to do that, the tolerances have to be incredible. And uh, between that sole plate and the runner here, we can actually put in shims to make sure that the, uh, the runner itself is perfectly level. The runner isn't a single piece, it is segmented, and then we have to be careful as well that the joins are perfectly level as well. The last thing we want is that 4,000 tons while it's rotating come into a grinding halt when it hits uh, a bearing join. So that's what we can see from the outside. Let's have a look what we can see in the inside. We've just come inside. Uh, we're in the bilge of DSS 43. We've actually switched the, the hydrostatic bearing off at the moment because it's a, a little bit loud. So we'll keep it down for a couple of hours just to make sure that the oil doesn't cool down too much. You're looking around, you see uh, components from the two systems responsible for antenna movement. You've got the the bull gear here responsible for azimuth movement and you have the drive units mated to those. And then you have the hydrostatic components. Now the hydrostatic is an enclosed loop system so the oil is continuously circulating. After the oil is injected under high pressure from the pads onto the runner to create the lift, it's recovered in the reservoir that runs around the antenna. These precharged pumps recover that oil and feed it through the heat exchanger here. Now the heat exchanger maintains a temperature of 38 degrees centigrade for the oil and this also keeps the viscosity constant as well. The heat exchanger receives chilled water from the new idiobatic uh, chilling system on the ground. 
So that's uh, that's a recent addition, just this this last year. The oil goes through a series of filters, and then distributed back to the pads and the skid pumps. The cycle begins again. So let's have a look at the the skid pumps. Well, these are the pumps or the skid pumps for pad number one. And you can see, looking at the, the structure, you've got the, the beam coming down here, and you've also got the beam coming down from the elevation bearing. Underneath the floor, they, they will meet, and underneath that, we have pad number one. These six pumps here, or skid pumps, provide the pressure for each of the recesses within the pad, creating lift. And we have a maximum pressure of 2,500 PSI. Now, we do have a system, a backup system, just in case. When you have 4,000 tons of metal gliding around and you suddenly lose power, you can't just allow it to, to fall onto the runner. The accumulator system here is, uh, is a gas system. And when it detects a loss of pressure, it will maintain the pressure and slowly decrease it until the pad and the runner land, hopefully gently. And that concludes a video of the 70 meter antenna hydrostatic bearing. If you have any questions, talk to your trainer or consult the reference material.